Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about friction. So friction is defined as a force that resists the movement of two contacting surfaces against each other. And the direction of the friction is tangent to the surface and it's in the opposite direction of motion. So if I'm pushing a box on a surface, what would be the direction of friction? If I draw the free by diagram, because the box tends to move to the right, the friction force is resisting that. So it would be to the left. And of course I have normal force, and also the weight of the box. Or let's say we have a ladder that is leaning against the wall and it's sitting on the ground. If there would be a person with a weight W, we'll see that the ladder tends to slide downward. So the friction force here, I call it F A, if we call this point A and this point B, would be the opposite direction. Or here, the ladder wants to move to the left. So the friction force would be the opposite direction. And of course, we have normal forces Na and Nb. But what would be the magnitude of friction force? So if you say that the magnitude is mu n or mu Fn, you're almost right, but not quite. That's the maximum value the friction can have. So the maximum value of friction force would be mu s n. And then we get that maximum value when our object is about to move. So in general, friction force is equal or less than mu n. And we can replace it by mu n if we have impending motion. So we cannot assume that friction force is mu n unless we know that we have impending motion or sliding between the surfaces. So for example, here, I cannot assume that force B would be equals mu NB because I don't know whether there would be actual motion or it would be we are close to impending motion. But if I know, then I can replace it. Then technically, then I won't have two unknowns. Then I will only have one unknown because I have a relation between the two forces. Now let's review different types of friction problem that we can have. So the first type is that if we have no impending motion, so assume this structure, if we draw the free body diagram for each case, at A, I have the normal force, and this one according to the weight, when the weight is applied, our rod is tend to move to the left, so the friction force would be the opposite direction. And at C I have Cx and Cy. If I draw the other member, similarly I have normal force here, and because our member tends to move to the right, then the friction force would be to the left. And I have the weight here, and these are internal forces which are equal and opposite direction. So if there is no impending motion, then I don't know any relation between these two, the friction force and the normal force. So I can only use equilibrium equation. So only, in this case, only equilibrium equation can be used. No friction equation. And if you look at the problem, we have six unknowns, and we have two free by diagrams. So we, we can solve for uh, for six unknowns. But if, 
let's say W is also unknown, then we really can't solve it because we can't use friction equation because there is no impending motion. And all we know is that the friction force is less than mu n. And that's not going to help us. The second type is sliding is impending and the sliding surface is known. Again, we are looking at the same problem, but this time the problem is says that we have sliding at A. So if I draw the free body diagram again here, I have Cx and Cy. I have W, Na. But here for Fa, because I know it's going to slide at A, I know Fa would be equal to mu and a so i can replace it with my friction equation and for b if i know that the b is not moving then i cannot replace it with friction equation so here i get additional equation i relate the two unknowns because I know there would be impending motion. Type 3 friction problem is that when sliding is impending and the sliding surface is not known. So I know there would be sliding, but I don't know which one is going to slide first. I don't know whether there would be a sliding at B or a sliding at A. In that case, there are several possibilities, because it could slide at A, it could slide at B, both of them can slide at the same time. So we have to make an assumption. The way we are going to proceed with such problems is that we make an assumption and any assumption that we make is going to make our problem, our type 3 problem, a type 2 problem. Because if we assume there would be a sliding at A, that means that the sliding surface is known and then we go and make uh, proceed based on a uh, type 2 problems. But we have to check our assumption to see whether our assumption is correct or not. How can we check our assumption? Let's say I draw the free body diagram, and then I make an assumption that is not gonna move, it's not gonna slide based on at A, but at B. So I replace Fb with mu and b. That would be more as my assumption. Then how can I confirm that assumption after solving the problem? So if I proceed based on the assumption, then I can find the friction force here. And after finding the friction force, if it is larger than the maximum limit, that means that my assumption is incorrect. And if the other friction force is less than the maximum, then that means that our assumption is correct. So if the friction force is larger than the maximum limit, what is the maximum limit? The maximum limit of a friction force is mu n. That's the max that we can have. If we get a higher than value than that, that means that our assumption is, is incorrect. And if we get a value less than that, that means that the assumption is correct. So whenever you make an assumption for type 3 problems, you need to confirm that assumption. So we have three problems, three type of friction problems. The first one, uh, there is no impending motion. So it's basically an equilibrium problem. We can't use any information about our friction force. The second problem, we know the surface that we have impending motion, so we could use our friction equation. Type 3, we know there would be a sliding, but we don't know which surface. And that one we have to make an assumption and then confirm our assumption. So we have three types of friction problem. Before you start solving the problem, you need to identify which type uh, 
you are dealing with.